My name is Nia Johnson. I am currently pursuing my BA in Studio Arts. My experience as an art student has been a very um, challenging but um, enlightening experience. I've learned many um, qualifications of being an artist and as well as learning more about art history within itself, such as the history of textiles and the history of um, artists where I've learned to develop skills from, as well as learning um, more about sculpture and just forming and creating my own style of artwork. My experience here as a black female artist has allowed me to express myself through my artwork. Um, I feel that um, I'm able to show um, not only just my university, but the world, my experience as a black female and as an artist, um, what my life is like um, daily and what I've experienced throughout my life. And coming to SIUE has allowed me to really open up about that. What inspires my artwork is just um, my day-to-day -day life, um, growing as well as my childhood and what I've experienced as well as um, such as family, um, jobs, and um, just ordinary life and ordinary people that are like me. African culture as well, connecting with my roots and understanding what life was like during that time and how it connects to me personally now in the present time and how it connects to other African Americans who cannot connect with their um, lineage because of that gray area within their genealogy. So that allows me to be inspired to make that type of work so they can, so other black Americans can feel inspired to learn about their heritage and learn about their history. And those who don't know about it, they can look at my artwork and they can feel inspired some sort of way. As an artist, I feel that my work has influenced others to express themselves, express how they feel um, inside and their experience. They're, everyone has their own experience and they should be able to share it freely. Um, especially other artists. So I feel like that's how my artwork have influenced other um, artists. Um, as for non-artists, I feel that it has influenced many to begin to start art. Um, I've had a few friends that actually began to paint because they see my artwork on TikTok and they message me and it's just so, it's such an honor to hear that they're inspired by my work, therefore they want to recreate their own work. And it's just, um, just I'm just very grateful to be able to influence someone with my work. It feels very honorable because I'm able to break down um, walls of, um, I guess, black, um, art stereotype as well as um, being able to show uniqueness of artwork. I've had many pieces exhibited in white spaces where my art was totally different from um, other artists as it should be. Each piece, every artist should have work that differs from other artists. It has been such a amazing experience because um, other people from other cultures are able to experience my culture um, as well as um, other artists who are from other cultures. I'm able to experience their culture through their artwork. So um, that's um, been my experience as um, a black artist in white spaces. It feels wonderful. I'm very honored, um, especially those who helped me um, set it up. I really appreciate um, Allison, um, Simone, Haven, everyone. It's been truly an honor, and I'm glad to be a part of um, this exhibition at SIUE Lovejoy Library. So this is the painting, um, Woman at the Well, and this painting was inspired by the woman who was at the well um, that Jesus had an encounter with. Um, 
I have some artwork that is based on my faith belief. So I wanted to create something to show that to others um, as a reflection of my background, um, which is Christians. This story takes place of when um, Jesus um, met a woman at the well and he told her that she can have water where she no longer thirsts. But what most people don't realize is that that is a metaphor speaking which um, the Bible used a lot of um, parables. So um, basically he was offering, offering her eternal life. And a lot of times, you know, as humans, we need water to survive and um, it's a necessity in our everyday life. But um, it was referencing to something much deeper. And so I wanted to show that through my piece in which she holds a vessel of water um, symbolizing that eternal life, uh, which is why you can never see the exact bottom of the vessel because it's never ending. So yes, and I also wanted to make a representation of what a possible woman of color could look like in the Bible since um, most uh, biblical pieces are mostly reflect a lot of European figures. I wanted to show somebody who had features that look like me and other um, people of color. And this piece is um, Strange Fruit and it's based on the singer Billie Holiday. And it's, um, I was inspired by one of her songs, uh, which is um, the title Strange Fruit, in which talks about Billie Holiday's experience as a black artist seeing the lynching of um, black men as she would travel through um, to perform her music. As you can see, there are pieces of fruit which represents the unfortunate events that happened to black men during that time. And she's singing into a microphone, kind of like a thought of despair in her face. And she is kind of just looking, not exactly at the men, because I can imagine her seeing um, that scene, it being heartbreaking to the point she doesn't want to see it anymore. So um, that's why I kind of shifted her perspective um, as well as um, just adding the fruit towards the corner so it can also draw attention to the viewer's eyes um, and not just Billie Holiday because um, I wanted to show um, how racism can, um, it's not something that happened just a long time ago, it's still relevant, but I wanted to bring attention to that through this piece, uh, which is also a painting and plaster. So. It was a really um, emotional piece to make, but it was also a um, interesting experience to do. This piece is called The Warrior, and it's actually a portrait. Um, I wanted to show what it's like um, to be a strong, um, independent woman through this portrait, which is why um, she has like the bamboo staff and she has um, Afro color patterns. So again, it's kind of that connection with culture. And um, this time I wanted to make a kind of a grayscale painting, which is why it's mostly black, white, and um, shades of gray. Um, and it, I wanted to challenge myself to do a piece of artwork without color. So this is the result of the warrior in which there's a lot of different patterns, different style, and just like expression. So you can't really tell like if she, what she's really thinking. And I like the idea of this image because it kind of keeps you guessing the more you stare at it. Like, is she ready to fight? Is she ready to embrace? You never know. This is Embrace, and this is also um, a portrait that I've done. Um, wanted to just show the idea of family and the idea of embracing one another and passing down something that's generational. So as a person who is close to their family, I wanted to make a piece that reflects how it feels to feel embraced and feel warm and just understanding um, what it's like to have something passed down from generation to generation, which is why, um, you know, she's passing down the idea of being, you know, embracing um, to her child and 
you know, in hopes that when the child grows up, they can also pass down. Um, just, you know, the idea of being um, a positive role model and just um, passing down positive family values is what I wanted to achieve in this piece. These are some more of my pieces. Um, they're more of like three-dimensional works. This piece in particular is called Golden, and it's a reference to Hollywood um, and how it's changed over time. Many actresses now are look a lot different than what society is used to, uh, which I'm glad we're straying away from the norms of what beautiful features are considered in Hollywood. And this is a reference to how during the 1950s, a lot of black actresses and actors um, look different than what we're so used to today. If you were fair skinned, you were more accepted as um, being, you know, the main lead in that um, movie versus if you were more of a darker complexion, you were um, given more stereotypical roles such as um, maids or butlers. And now um, that we have more a diverse um, diversity in Hollywood, you see a lot more um, Afro features in which you see um, black actresses. They're able to wear their hair the way they want to. They're able to have um, their own um, clothing the way they would like. They're able to um, participate with their own features, not having to alter or um, bleach their skin, um, and just be accepted. Actresses like Lapita, uh, Angela Bassett, and um, actors like Chadwick Boseman and um, Michael B. Jordan, and those who paved the way for other young black actors as well. And um, yeah. I wanted to create something like that by adding more Afro uh, features. So she has locks, she has like the bronze skin, and the gold um, represents like the awards that many black Americans have received for their movies that they've done. And I'm just very excited uh, for the future of Hollywood. So I wanted to make this as like, um, I guess, my own sculpture or my own award for um, black actors. So this is the rice style and this is based on the women of Cameroon when they were um, captured by um, slave owners. They would braid rice into their hair and I wanted to incorporate the rice in the hair some type of way which is why the doll has cornrows in her hair and she has rice um, threaded um, throughout her um, braids. And um, within her dress, she has a map that uh, represents, you know, being away from home and coming to a new world that um, she's not used to. And it's kind of interesting because it's a fusion of cultures going on here because um, it's a culture of uh, being a woman from Cameroon and also um, it's a culture of, you know, like, um, being from Ghana, which the kente cloth um, is sewn into the doll. And I just wanted to show that even though um, there were many um, enslaved people from different um, tribes, um, they share similar experiences. So you can see the copper ships in which it has like rows of the slaves laying down. But it just shows that the idea of, you know, where culture comes from and how we see it in today's society and how it's just not, you know, braids or it's just not fashion. It's much deeper. It has deeper meaning and deeper roots to it. So um, I just wanted to show that in my work and um, I wanted to just have a visual description of what it's like um, as a woman who has been enslaved and who has been um, captured and has, you know, the ability to try to survive the best way she could, which is, you know, having these rice grains to grow and um, just trying to survive by all means. 
This is the era of dance and I made this as Swick and this piece was inspired by Kara Walker. Uh, she is also a black artist who does a lot of beautiful silhouette work. And I wanted to do something that um, show my inspiration. And this is basically like the era of dancing. So it starts kind of like from the 1950s. Um, so there's like the Supremes like in the far corner. And then it like goes to like disco dancing, like the 70s and then it goes more towards like the 90s and um, you know, present day dance. So I wanted to just show that through my piece. Um, this is all paper um, that I cut um, by hand and I wanted to show the contrast of black and white images. Um, so it was something that was totally out of um, what I normally do, which is painting and sculpture, but it was a very fun experience to make. And then this piece is Crown Not At. I made this piece as a celebration piece, also kind of a way to express my frustration of the passing of the Crown Act was a bill passing to allow African Americans to wear their hair um, however they want without discrimination. So I wanted to create a piece symbolizing how this resonates again with history. It resembles the Tigon Law, which Creole women had to wear head wraps in order not to be, um, I guess, associated as European women or um, also the idea that they, um, that other people were fascinated with their features and how they look. So they were ordered to wear head wraps um, in order to cover their hair. And I just wanted to show the world and others that not much has changed because there are so many laws and rules in order to be able to be who you are and not able to express yourself without being penalized for it and which is why she has a wrap but she's also showing her hair so it's kind of like she's in between of showing herself and revealing herself but at the same time she's kind of hiding who she is not because she wants to but because society tells her that she should hide or she should look a certain way or um, she shouldn't appreciate who she is, but I wanted to make a piece to show that um, any woman of color should be able to appreciate how she looks and um, not cover who she is inside or outside.